As an experimental aircraft owner, it's not difficult to do some basic testing of an aircraft altimeter encoder using some inexpensive parts. Altimeter encoders work by measuring the local barometric pressure and sending out a binary representation of the altitude, assuming a sea level pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury. Once you know the string of binary digits, a lookup table can be used to convert that altitude in feet. The reason a lookup table is so useful is because the binary representation is known as gray code, which is somewhat different from the powers of two representation of binary that you may already be familiar with. Pictured here are 10 LEDs directly connected to the output of an encoder. Each LED represents one binary digit. An LED off represents a zero, and an LED on represents a one. The 10 digits are named from left to right, D4, A1, A2, A4, B1, B2, B4, and C1, C2, C4, with the most significant digit being D4 and the least significant being C4. As can be seen in the photo, B2, B4, and C1 are on or set to 1. All other LEDs are off or set to 0. Using the lookup table shown below, you can see that the encoder is displaying an altitude of 200 feet. Keep in mind that altitude encoders display an uncorrected altitude, meaning that no adjustment is made for local barometric deviations from the standard pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury at sea level. One of the checks required by the FAA for an altitude encoder is that it must agree within 125 feet of the pilot's altimeter when the pilot's altimeter has been adjusted to 29.92 inches of mercury. That requirement can be found in Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 91.217, Paragraph A. Note that Section 2 of Paragraph A requires the pilot's altimeter to be adjusted to 29.92 inches of mercury before comparing with the altitude displayed by the encoder. That is because the encoder is measuring altitude based on the assumption that sea level pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury. It is this uncorrected altitude from the encoder that is transmitted by the transponder to air traffic control. Here is how to create your own tester that will display the altitude given by an encoder. The first step is to obtain the pinout for your encoder. Pictured here is the pinout of the encoder used in the making of this video. Most encoders use a DB15 connector, as does the one shown here. Note that the first five digits uh, are represented by the first five pins, and the final five digits are represented by pins 9 through 13. In the first five pins of the DB15, Connector, note that the digits of the data are all sequential. But in the second set of five pins, the last two digits, C2 and C4, are out of order. That is something to take note of while building your tester. One nice thing about the arrangement of the pins shown here is that if a ribbon cable is used, the first ten wires of the ribbon cable contain all of the altitude digits and nothing else. That makes it easy to break out the altitude digits into a single group of 10 wires and the remaining pins, 6, 7, 8, 14, and 15, and a separate ribbon cable of 5 wires. Since pins 7 and 14 are not used, I only need to supply power and ground to pins 8 and 15. And I also need to ground pin 6, the strobe line, in order to enable the encoder to send output. If I do not ground pin 6, the encoder will be in standby mode and won't send out any altitude data 
over the DB15 connector. As shown in this photo, power and ground are connected to the breadboard using alligator clips. The red alligator clip defines the 14 volt rail of the breadboard and the black alligator clip defines the ground rail of the breadboard. Also connected to the 14 volt rail is a red wire which goes to pin 8 of the DB15. A green wire connects the ground rail to pin 15 of the DB15. The white wire goes to pin 6 and is also connected to the ground rail of the breadboard. Note that all of the LEDs are oriented so that the positive lead of each LED is connected to the 14 volt rail. The negative lead of each LED is connected to a current limiting resistor which in turn goes to one of the 10 data pins on the DB15. The current limiting resistor is used to protect the LEDs. The LEDs I'm using are rated for 2 to 3 volts and I'm using 1K to 10K ohm resistors to keep the current under 10 milliamps. One last thing to note is that I had to swap the positions of the wires coming from pins 12 and 13 so that C4 is in the last position. That makes it easy to read out the binary digits in proper order. Note also that the encoder turns on a line by simply connecting it to ground. You can also see that by arbitrarily grounding any one of the data leads coming from the encoder and the corresponding LED will light up. Here is a brief video clip of what the tester looks like when the power is first turned on. This particular model of encoder does a quick test of each data line before beginning the warm-up cycle and finally sending out the measured altitude after the warm-up period. It is also possible to change the air pressure measured by the encoder by attaching a small syringe to the pitostatic line of the encoder. Wide variation in pressure can be measured by this means, but for precise work at extreme altitudes, a pitostatic test set would be required. Using a simple and inexpensive test set like this can detect problems that would otherwise require more expensive equipment. For example, I recently used this simple test set when a fellow pilot was advised by the FAA that his encoder was not operating correctly. A simple use of this test setup quickly determined that two of the data lines in the custom-built DB15 he had were switched. A simple correction for two wires was all that was needed to correct the problem. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and all comments are welcome.